this is history in the making of the Daily Beat because we're going to write a song today. Everyone in the audience, because there's lots of clutch fans here, obviously. You guys have filled this place up. So. Uh, now, our whacked out brains of the Daily Beat have figured something out. we got Perry, your new albums in stores today, solo records, out today. We're going to get Perry to write a song title and the first line of a song. And then uh, we're going to have everyone in the audience, you're going to get a chance to fill in the song with your own line, okay? And then at the end of the show, Clutch is going to play that song. Yeah. All right, yeah. All right check it out. Uh, welcome back to The Daily Beat. Uh, we're talking to friends of Clutch in the audience here. So who would you never go see in concert? I don't know. Michael Bolton. That's a good choice. Yeah. yeah. Does Definitely. he still have the mullet happening? I haven't I'm seen not a fan recently. of him. Why would you ask me? Uh, okay, sorry. I thought you were keeping track. Uh, what about you, man? Uh, I'd have to go with Bon Jovi. Too much of a pansy for me. Uh, okay, yeah, all right. Stuff. You're not into bad medicine? And, uh, uh, yeah, what was the, the one, the one line, uh, when you get drunk, I'll be the wine? Yeah. Okay, sorry. No matter roses. <laughs> Any of you guys in clutch? Dan, you got an opinion on this? Uh, we're talking about it, and uh, I'll personally help John myself. R really? You wouldn't want to hear the old Rocket Man? Any of those favorites? No. Aww. Not feeling it. Okay. All right. Uh, Rachel, chilling out with Perry here. What's up? Yeah, we're, we're working on the song. I, 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 you have a title? Yeah. What's the title? Should I say it out loud? Yeah, let's hear it right now. Yeah, show it to us. My friends call me Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great title. My friends call me Bullseye. So make sure everybody now, you're thinking about a line for the for the song. No profanity. Don't screw it up. Okay? All right. I'm here with Clutch. Now, a couple things I want to ask you about. First off, I heard a strange thing that you guys built this contraption when you're touring in your van. Because obviously when you tour, space is cramped. You know, you're trying to find places to sleep. So what did you guys rig up in your van? This is this is quite some time ago. This is our first van. It was called the Thunder Chief. Okay. And um, we had a swinging platform on chains, right? And we put all the uh, gear underneath there. But see, the platform swung back and <laughs> forth when there wasn't enough gear in there. And uh, I guess we just, in our naivete, just decided that we would put our heads directly in line with the windshield. So when any time you step on the brakes, nine times out of ten, you ended up in between the front, you know, two seats. So um, <laughs> that was a learning experience. It would break down to who's driving, if it was on purpose or not, right? Yeah. We, sold, we actually sold the Thunder Chief for uh, the cost of the tow truck driver record that got, got it off our hands. Okay. $200. Nice. God rest its soul. <laughs> um, now, you guys live all in West Virginia now, right? What What is it about West Virginia? I, I, I don't mean to include. Usually people, you know, leave... West Virginia and come somewhere, you know. What is it about West Virginia that you guys like so much? How cheap it is. It's really cheap to live out there. Okay, well, like, we're from the D.C. area where if you wanted to rent a house, a house like we have in the D.C. area right on the Potomac would probably be at least a couple grand a month where we get ours for 700 What's ours? Like, where, where are you living now, right? We live in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Yeah, but what kind of, miles kind of pad are we talking about? Uh, it's like a... Uh, it's a ranch house. Yeah, basically. It's like a retirement home that some guy moved out of, basically. It's big, though. No. You know, no? Super small. Oh, okay. Now, uh, you guys toured Marilyn Manson, and I heard in the beginning that you were kind of apprehensive because, you know, when Hole, I saw the whole Marilyn Manson show, uh, the, the audience wasn't very receptive to Hole. You know, you get all these goth kids in there, and they're, they're not... I, I went into that tour with a real bad attitude, I'll admit that. Um, and you know what, it was four months long, and after the four months I realized it was really a wise decision because, you know, the front rows of any crowd, when you're opening up for somebody, those are always the most passionate fans. Yeah. And, you know, after the third month of, you know, the 13-year-old kid dressed up like a vampire looking at me like I'm the jerk, you know, it got really, really old. Yeah. But then, you know, those kids came to go see us later on. Okay. And they were, and at the band were gentlemen, and, uh, you know, I'm glad we did it in retrospect. Right on. So you did yeah. pick up some fans from that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you had uh, Delphio Marcellus, which is the younger brother of Wynton and Branford. Uh, he played trombone on your last record. Yes. How did you hook up with this guy? Was he a fan, or did you approach him? How did it come together? You know, we saw him what, uh, playing with Elvin Jones. Down at D.C. at the uh, Blues Alley Club. We went to see uh, Elvin Jones jazz trauma and we had Delta to play in his band and that was the first time we were supposed to be. Yeah. And, uh, we should have the, the house in a white trench coat in the mud. 
I'll never forget that. And he almost looked like he was going to turn away. It was night and it was storming. And he had a white trench coat on with his trombone standing in the rain, looking like he was just about to hightail it out of there. I said, no, you got the right place. And his white felt <laughs> trench coat covered in mud. Uh, you guys have been around now for a long, I mean, this is your seventh release. We talked about this earlier. You know, four LPs, three EPs. Um, I, I'm always curious when I talk to bands who have been around for so long, what your a take is on the music today, now, what's going on? It's the same as it ever was, I think. In the big picture, things happen cyclically. There's always a reaction, and then it becomes extreme, and then it becomes a parody of itself, and then there's a reaction against that. And nowadays, I think there's a lot of melodrama, lyrically, you know, a lot of kind of whining about problems that really aren't problems in the yeah. big picture of life. And, uh, uh, you know, but each their own. There's obviously, you know, yeah. it speaks to people, and that, you know, I'm not... But that's just not our bag. Okay. Well, that's important to note because uh, we are going to be passing around the, the song lyrics, the song you're going to sing. No whining, okay, from everybody here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. about ex-girlfriends or how lonely you are. Okay, that's important. And then also, um, what I have here, check this out. Because uh, I've heard that you are quite the vocabulatarian. That's sort of a Don King word, right? Okay. So I've got this dictionary here, you know, if you want to use it for um, when we're writing the songs, you know, lyrics and stuff, because you're, you, tend to, you, you tend to have some words in there that people may go, hmm. Oh, okay. I've read this. You what? <laughs> you, you wrote this? Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, hey, uh, so remember the song. I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that you guys have decided to play this song. So, hey, Perry, do we uh, do we got the first line of the song? What's going on? Yeah, we do. Yeah. What's the first line? Can we hear it? My friends call me Bullseye. Well, that's a title, right? Oh. Okay. Yeah. What's what, 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 how did it go? Let me the Perry. Bullseye is my name because I got great aim. <laughs> We're taking care of you guys. Yeah. All right. Go smooth. This is going to be a big hit. Do I get like part of the mechanical or the royalties yeah. on this song? This happens. Half a point. All right, all right. That's on tape, dude. Okay. Uh, when we get back, we'll talk more with Perry Farrell. We'll talk with Clutch. We'll continue the Daily Beats' first ever song. And we're writing all together as one. Everybody kind of think about what you're going to write when the pad gets to you. Now listen, in the studio, we have Perry Farrell, the guys from Clutch, writing a song. And the title of the song, John, what's the title of that song again? Zeke, what's the title of the song? It is, what's the name of the chick? My friends call me Bullseye. My bullseye. friends call me Bullseye. Do you have a line for the song to be incorporated? My uh, friends call me Bullseye. How about, uh, my friends call me Bullseye. Why, why, why? Because... <laughs> I Those like beets are made of kosher meat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those meat are made of kosher meat. Well, we got it. Well, 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 we got it, Step on We are done here, brother, so back in the studio. Rock out. All right, so why, why? Why, why, why? Because my feet are made of kosher meat. It makes sense, it, totally. Thanks, Step on. No cool. Now performing this song from Pure Rock Fury. It's the new album out from Clutch. <laughs>
making of the very first song ever composed on the Daily Beat. Harry Farrell started it. Your fans finished it. We'll and ruin it. <laughs> That's after the break. It's the Daily Beat. Cool. Okay, now it is. Here it is right now. You've been waiting. It's history to making the first song ever composed on the Daily Beat. Harry Farrell gave it the title. My friends call me Bullseye. And right now, Clutch is going to play it. Here we go. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 